So we have our editor's choice company. That means they were chosen from Eureka Park. They found out, I think, at around 1 p.m. So uh, you know, they've, they've put together a presentation very quickly. Uh, but uh, let's check it out. So the company is Naki. Presenting for Naki is co-founder and CEO Jake Boschernitsen. Yeah. Take it away. All right, hello, everyone. So I'm uh, Jake, uh, co-founder and CEO of Naki. And so I'd like to start off with a question. What is the core purpose of technology? There are a lot of answers to that question, but one of the most common answers by far is that technology is meant to simplify our lives. But if the technology around us make our lives easier, why does controlling it often feel so complicated? Nowhere is this contradiction or paradox more relevant than in the smart home space. We're increasingly surrounded by connected devices, smart door locks and light bulbs, even smart coffee machines. What all of them have in common is that they aim to simplify our lives, yet there's still unnecessary complexity in the control experience. We still need to reach into our pockets and pull out a smartphone and navigate through a myriad of mobile apps just to find the right one for our smart thermostat or light bulb and so forth. Or we have to walk up to a specific switch Let's go to the next slide. Uh, a button or switch on the wall uh, to control a connected device. Uh, and even, uh, even voice control, which attempts to provide an even simpler experience and remedy some of these complexities, uh, can be rendered unusable in loud environments. And in quiet environments, it can be disruptive. It's also prone to misunderstanding people with accents, people who don't articulate in the right way, like children or the elderly. So on the whole, all of these supposedly smart control interfaces are still more complicated than they should be. So we believe there's a better way. Naki is a small Wi-Fi enabled device that instantly transforms walls, tables, doors, and other ordinary surfaces in your environment into powerful and highly accessible remote controls. With Naki discreetly mounted underneath a table or on a wall or furniture in your home, the entire surface is activated as a control interface. So with, uh, we actually integrate with Nest, with Philips Hue, LifeX. We're officially a trigger on IFTTT. So we work with a whole wide array of smart devices. So here you have a kitchen counter that's activated as a contr control. Uh, with a triple tap, you can make your lost phone ring. So that's just one example. Uh, you can actually activate a single surface to recognize a variety of gestures. So you can set up a double tap to do one thing, two double taps, or a triple tap to do something else. And let's go to the next slide. You can also uh, allow one gesture to trigger multiple functions all at once. So for example, if I put Naki underneath a coffee table in my living room, I can sit on the sofa, get comfortable, and with two double taps, I can instantly dim the lights, boot up my TV, and activate my Sonos speakers. So uh, another example, I could put Naki behind my nightstand, get into bed, and gently tap a simple pattern to, to set my alarm, adjust my thermostat to the temperature I want to sleep at, and so forth. So it's really powerful, and you're just bringing the entire environment to life. Let's go to the next one. So here are a few examples of some integrations. Uh, we have an open API. so beyond the integrations we already have with a broad range of smart devices on the market today, uh, as more devices become connected and the developer community taps into our API, the possibilities will continue to expand. And our technology, uh, it really transcends boundaries. Uh, unlike voice control, which can be restricted or to a specific language, uh, tapping surfaces is something that you know, people everywhere understand. And so a few months ago, we took Naki to Kickstarter, setting a goal to raise $35,000. We hit that goal in one hour. And by the time the campaign was over, we raised well over a million dollars on Kickstarter, becoming one of the most funded uh, technology companies, uh, actually number one in our state of Texas. And we've actually sold into more than 90 countries. Next slide. We have a pretty great team to actually make this happen. Uh, the co-founders and I, have, uh, we were serial entrepreneurs. I founded uh, actually uh, the first online marketplace for sharing rides before Uber and Lyft sold that company. Uh, it was called Ridester. Founded Linkable, an online bookmarking tool. Uh, Ohad has had several software exits as well. And we've actually doubled our team, so we're growing very quickly. 
and it's an exciting time ahead. We're going to get Nakis deployed all over the world. Uh, let's go on to... All right, so that's the end of the slide, guys. I put this together in like 30 minutes, so uh, thank you for bearing with the chaos. I'm going to actually do a demonstration of Naki right now and cross my fingers. So before I show that to you, uh, Naki itself, it's a small Wi-Fi device, like I explained. It actually runs on four AAA batteries, giving you more than a year of battery life. And to activate a Surface after powering it on, you essentially you take the included mount that uses 3M tape so it's removable without damaging surfaces. You attach it. Typically, you don't even have to see it to use it, like I said. But you would attach it to a surface. Then you mount Naki to that surface. And are we uh, connected? Wi-Fi is connected? Oh, wait, wait, you, yes. OK. Yep. Good. okay. Quick, quickly. All right, so oh, we've got everything on. connected. It's on. It's on. Turn it off. OK, so we're going to turn it off. Turn it off. So I've, this entire surface will respond. I'm crossing my fingers. <laughs> but I've set up a triple tap to turn that light off or on. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. All right, and we're going to do. Let's do it a little bit further away to turn it on. There you go. So, and what's really exciting about it is you can create all kinds of patterns. You can create a secret, put Naki on your garage door and create a very complex pattern, a double tap, quadruple tap, double tap, triple tap to actually unlock your garage door. Um, you can put this you know, in your kid's room and they may not be able to reach a light switch on the wall. But they just go up to the wall, and they know three taps will do whatever they want, send a text message to their parents that they need help or turn a light on or so forth. So cool. that's Naki. Judges, what do you think? Uh, a few quick questions. Yeah. Um, one is, what does it cost? Let's say you had very high volume. What will it cost you to make each of these, and what do you expect to sell each of them for? So. Uh, the, the actual internal costs for us, uh, we've, we have competitors on the market, so I won't discuss that. But I'll say that our margins are very, very healthy. Um, and we actually have 4x margin. Um, typically, uh, so the suggested retail price for one unit is $79.99. On Kickstarter, we find that a lot of people actually buy multiples. So they'll buy three packs, five packs to activate their entire home or office or environment as a control interface. And, and the quick follow-up is, how do you configure it? So you talked about the IFT integration, Nest yeah. integration, all that. Is there an app? Is there some other way of doing it? How do you yeah. do that? So that's a great question. The question is, how do we set it up? Uh, and our philosophy with everything that we design with this product is that simple is better. And so that has to go beyond how you experience using it once it's set up. It has to actually be a simple process to set it up. It does have a companion app for iOS and Android. You use that app to set it up to your Wi-Fi network at your home or office. Then you select, you create a gesture, a certain pattern. And then you add tasks that you want that gesture to trigger. And you see a menu of integrations and select what functions you want. So it feels so. like a great user interface to IFT. So have you built your own version of IFT interfacing with IFT? Or is the guts of the interface actually you know, a front end to IFT? So you were asking about our uh, IFT integration? Well, it's or sort of, yeah, it's basically, did you rebuild your own version of IFT? No, so we actually did not have to work. reverse engineer uh, integration with IFT. So IFT has thousands of endpoints or results, mm -hmm. and it has only a small set of triggers. Uh, Amazon Echo, uh, for example, is one of them. Uh, so we actually um, I, are working directly with Joey Khalid and some others at IFT. We actually are officially a trigger on IFT. We've also uh, worked with Philips and we're, uh, met with them in California. We're integrating with their Hue in a pretty powerful way. So, mm -hmm. so I'm yeah. totally digging your boots, I have to tell you. Um, <laughs> yeah, boots. Does, we're does, from Texas. <laughs> yeah, no. Does the device know where it is? So can I program different gestures for a bedroom versus a living room? Or do I have to buy two different devices? So the way Naki works is it actually activates the space that you're in as an interface. So if you want to make your whole entire kitchen counter a remote control, you would actually mount a Naki under or somewhere on the kitchen counter. If you want to activate the coffee table, your nightstand as a remote, you would set up another Naki there. And then in the app, 
all of your Nakis are visible on a dashboard, and you would actually add whatever integrations you want specific to that location. So the, the price point is 79 bucks. so the Echo Dot is 49 and it yeah. feels like, going back to one of the questions Rob was asking is, you know, voice interaction versus very simple interaction. I think the yeah. interface, the, the, I mean, awesome for demos, not clear this is a big company in the making yeah. because it feels like a great feature of Ift, not sure it's standalone. So how do you think about that? How, in a voice controlled world, how do you build something which is a, a real sort of moat? Yeah, so that's a great question. So, you know, ultimately, there are options out there to control our connected worlds beyond, obviously, smartphones and buttons and so forth. Voice control. So you, Amazon Echo and Google Home have made enormous inroads, rapidly growing the market, because what they're doing is they're providing magical simplicity, something that's natural, extremely accessible, reducing the friction. We're doing that as well, and I don't think our, our role is not to displace voice, but there are many contexts when voice is not the best option. So I'll tell you what, when I'm in bed with my wife and she's asleep, I don't want to say, Alexa, turn off the lights and set my Nest thermostat to 72 degrees and set my alarm for 7 a.m. in the morning. I'd rather go tap, tap, tap. Me too. <laughs> yes. what, are, what are the use cases? You mentioned um, temperature. What, what are the things that people are using it for most often? So that's a great question. Uh, so we integrate uh, with all kinds of devices. Uh, we integrate with smart locks. Uh, thermostats, uh, but what's in smart coffee machines. What's interesting though is uh, we've actually surveyed a lot of our backers on Kickstarter and uh, our mind is blown. Obviously lighting and those common smart home functions are a good share of the use cases, but uh, we had someone just the other day tell us that they actually uh, bought this for their elderly parent that has dementia that forgets to take his medicine every day. And so he bought this Naki for his dad to put on his medicine cabinet and instead of calling him to say, hey, did you take your medicine, his dad taps twice. And so at the end of the day, if he doesn't get a call or if he doesn't get an SMS message saying, hey, uh, I, you can actually create a custom text message, basically, that gets sent by a gesture. And so he can be alerted very easily by his parent. So there's all kinds of uh, functionality. But anything that you would use an app to control or voice control to control, a Naki would. Uh, be a control interface for it. Unfortunately, I think we're actually out of time, so give it up for Naki. Yeah. Thank you.